My name is Risa Dixon, and welcome to my CSUSB Academics. Our guest today is Dr. Enrique Murillo, who is a professor of educational psychology and counseling here at Cal State San Bernardino. His expertise is in teaching and preparing educators for the K-12 schools. He also teaches courses in the doctoral program and in educational leadership. In addition, Dr. Murillo is an executive director of the Latino Education and Advocacy Days organization here on campus. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So explain to me what LEAD is. Okay, well, LEAD is an acronym. Uh -huh. It stands for Latino Education and Advocacy Days. Right. It used to be DAY, and okay. I'll explain that. We started off as a DAY, but now we're DAYS. Okay. So, which means that the organization is expanding. Um, okay. It's incredible what's happened over the last two years. But if I were to explain to somebody, LEAD organization is an umbrella organization. It's a uh -huh. volunteer organization housed here in, in, our, uh, in the College of Education primarily, okay. but across campus. We have volunteers from across the university. Okay. And um, what it is is that it's a group of folks that we decided that we wanted to be proactive and do what we can to address the educational crisis among Latino students. In the Inland Empire in the, or generally? Well, it's, it's, it's really, it's in general. Okay. So we, um, it's actually the opposite. We started off as being a national with a mm -hmm. national and international scope, and then now we're bringing it to the Inland Empire. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it started off um, more than 10 years ago as one of the projects was the Journal of Latinos in Education. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then that led to another project and another project, and eventually we got to a, uh, a conference. Mm -hmm. And because of the overwhelming success of the conference, people were saying, okay, well, after the conference, what do you do? So, uh, I mean, it's great to have a summit and it's great to bring people together to talk about, you know, the issues, uh -huh. but there, there has to be a concerted effort every day to work on addressing the particular issues that, that we're facing. So this originally started as a planning effort for a summit or a conference, and then it grew larger than that? Is that what Ye you're saying? Yes. Well, I'm, I, um, I'm an, uh, primarily an editor uh -huh. of uh, journals and academic books. So I uh, edited uh, the Handbook of Latinos in Education, right. which was released last year. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do really is launch the handbook on our campus. So it was going to be a small little get together, um, I don't know, just uh, maybe 100 people in a room, talk about Latino educational issues, here's the handbook, and so forth. And somehow that turned into a bigger thing over the course of planning the, the book launching. Well, what if we do a, a conference? Mm -hmm. And then we started inviting folks. Uh, we got, right away we got um, a nod from the White House Office uh, uh, Initiatives Office, because mm -hmm. they themselves have an, an office that deals with l the Latino educational crisis. So they, they were looking at the handbook as a roadmap for the Obama administration as oh. the kinds of things that um, th uh, that the executive council should do in terms of addressing some of the, the issues. So right away we connected with some top uh, officials, federal officials, mm -hmm. and then well, let's invite them. You know, so we invited, yeah. um, uh, you know, some of these top Obama officials and that kind of led to the next thing, to the next thing. And eventually, before we knew it, in a matter of months, we had this big one-day conference that ended up reaching close to 200,000 participants altogether. That's amazing. It was yeah. live streamed, I understand, yes. all over the world? It, it was. Uh, our idea was just to have a small get-together mm -hmm. here in the College of Education, but then we outgrew that. Right. So, okay, so, <laughs> so then we, had, we moved over to the, the San Manuel Student Union. Right. So, um, in, in the in the student union, we had close to a thousand people in person, wow. and fifty five exhibitors. So that was great. But then, what was revolutionary about it is that we did sort of like what you're doing here: set up a camera, and reach out to mm -hmm. people. So we live streamed it uh, across the internet, uh -huh. totally free. Right. Right. And in fact, the conference itself was free. And so the next idea was let's get the various authors, the chapter authors of the handbook, mm -hmm. to each host a viewing event, or a, what we call the town hall, on their university. Oh, okay. So the handbook had 350 scholars involved altogether. So I reached out to those scholars. I said, okay, your job is then to watch us over the internet 
and get as many people to gather in a room. And uh, along with that, along with the webcast, there's a chat function on mm -hmm. the side. So you're watching it, but then you're able to chat here on the side, ask questions, and, and then people are able to talk to themselves as well. So we were lucky enough that uh, there's enough interest. There's a lot of thirst and hunger f uh, for these issues. So um, we ended up having 150 other universities each hosting their Latino Education Advocacy Day event on their campus. At the same time? At the same time. So we had the main one here on our campus, uh -huh. and then 150 other universities were having a similar activity. But rather than having in-person guests come in and to talk, they were just watching us, sort of like watching TV. Right. And, and then uh, some of them had hybrids where they would watch some of our activities here on campus mm -hmm. and then bring in their own guest speakers. And uh, so we did that. So there was roughly, I think, uh, 20 or 30,000 folks watching who were part of these different 150 viewing events. And then we had another 18,000 or so who were just, without being part of a viewing event, they were just watching it individually uh, on And those would be maybe teachers out of the area? Yeah, just somebody in the office or just somebody wow. watching it. And then uh, we were lucky enough that NBC Talk Radio, our local affiliate, mm -hmm. um, they really took an interest in it. So they broadcast across the radio segments of the day. So oh. that's another 150,000 listeners there. So all together we reached, uh, I think, probably close to 200,000 in our what we guess. So no wonder yeah. at the end of the day you say, okay, what's next? Yeah, well, it's like, okay, we have this hugely successful <laughs> summit, and then people are saying, okay, yeah, exactly, what's next? Okay, so is it going to be a yearly event? So, yeah, so we decided to have, it's going to be a yearly event. What's interesting is that after um, the success of the first mm -hmm. year, other universities were bidding to host the next one. So oh. we got a bit, is, oh, I don't know, I couldn't understand, it was almost like the Olympics. We want to host the next one, and so forth. And we were open to the idea. Yeah. So it was it was going to be uh, sort of like a rotating, where it would rotate across different campuses. Right. But we were lucky enough here that our particular campus took enough interest in it. They saw the, the success of it, and they said, no, we need to brand this as a CSUSB event. So it's going to stay here on so this campus. So it's going to stay here on this campus, and it's it's become one of our marquee events or signature events not just for the College of Education, mm -hmm. and not just for Cal State University San Bernardino, but really the Inland Empire. Very exciting. Yeah. We need to take a break. We'll be right back.